Welcome to Jersey Matters. I'm Larry Menti. Is Republican State Senator Declan O'Scanlan thinking about running for governor? We'll ask him. Also on today's show, the Department of Transportation is ready for winter, but what happens when all of that salt runs off into the water? Rutgers University gets a huge grant to improve health care in New Jersey. And an historic baseball field in Patterson, New Jersey, gets a facelift for Black History Month. And now, our interview with State Senator Declan O'Scanlan, Republican from Monmouth County. Thank you for coming in. My pleasure. I have, the uh, last two times I interviewed you, and you've been very gracious with your time, the last two times I interviewed you, I asked you specifically if you wanted to be governor. I asked you specifically if you're ever going to run, and you said no. You know, that you talked about friends that were running. You talked about that's not what you see yourself doing. You've given a lot of answers. So then I'm doing my research, and I look at this headline that says, Declan O'Scanlan not ruling out run for governor. That, that's not a declaration of candidacy, so let's be clear about that. And I still love the, the group of folks that are, are uh, on the list. Our own uh, Sean Golden, uh, chairman of Monmouth County, sheriff of Monmouth County, has an interest. Uh, Jack Chiarelli, it's Doug Steinhardt, our chairman. Jack is already running. John Bramnick might run. Uh, any one of those very qualified people uh, runs and, uh, look, for me, it's not ego-driven, although if you care about policy and you want to have as big an impact on policy as you possibly can, the thought of higher office has to cross your mind. I'm flattered to be considered amongst that great group of people, uh, but I'm not compelled to run. Uh, we'll have to see how things progress. But I really love being in the Senate. I think I found my voice there. Uh, so uh, the odds are not high. Uh, but I'm flattered. Uh, I will say your name is mentioned yeah. a lot. Your and name is mentioned as someone who should run, which is flattering to you. But the I'm not sure it enhances the credibility of the people mentioning it. But well, that'll be another. Oh another no, segment. no, it's it's pretty widespread. But it, but most people are already doing their due diligence. Most people are already looking for fundraising or talking to county chairs. Have you done any of that? There's been a few discussions. Uh, again, flattering discussions. But no, we're not gearing up to run. So uh, the it's, discussion It's unlikely that I'm going to pull that trigger. Uh, are there a few things policy-wise that could happen? I suppose, but it's not a high percentage likelihood. It's likely that our uh, field will be the folks I just mentioned, and I'll be very happy with that. Uh, look, for me, if there was a deficiency, a policy deficiency in the people considering running, I would feel much more compelled to do so. Uh, but between that, that, that group of, of fine gentlemen, and God, it would be great if, if a Republican woman would jump in too, uh, we're going to be well served by whomever in that group uh, becomes the, the candidate. If things change within the field, if a few other things maybe happen politically, is it still remotely possible I'd run? Remotely. We had two of them on recently. We had Jack Chitarelli and John Bramnick on, actually in the same, in the same show. And it was interesting, we were talking about um, the vaccination fight and how it fell apart. And uh, there was a feeling that um, President Sweeney might have lost some power in that, that he, he wasn't able to hold together a coalition to get it past the finish line. Anytime you have a battle like that and your legislation, your backing as a legislative leader doesn't succeed, there's, there's a question. Uh, and there is some diminishment of power, but that's what political capital and power is all about. You build it up not to stockpile it and have it forever. You build it up so you can use it to push uh, valuable legislation that you think is important. Now, I disagree with Steve Sweeney on a lot of things. I was a vote that came around on vaccines. That bill failed. We're looking at some other options and meeting with people on both sides, great folks on both sides. Uh, just yesterday, I was, my, my schedule was filled with people uh, on both sides of the vaccine issue. But getting back to your power question, you, you build your political capital and your power so you can invest it in what you think is good policy. Sometimes I think Steve is ill-advised, and I let him know that loudly and clearly. Other times I side with him. But yeah, that's what happens. When you get things passed, you build up more, uh, especially controversial things. When you don't succeed, then there's some diminishment. That's how politics works, and that's okay. Uh, and I don't think Steve, who's a friend, would have it any other way. I don't think he would say, well, had I known it wasn't going to pass, I wouldn't have gone down that route, would not have gone down that route. I think he genuinely believes this is a, a, an issue about children's health and their very lives. 
I think that's sincere on his part. I know a lot of the public or who's opposing the bill doesn't believe that. I do. And Joe Vitale, the, the prime sponsor of the bill, had extensive discussions with these guys. I know my motivation is purely about children's health. Uh, so again, I think, I don't think Steve would have done any different. I think he genuinely believes that it was about children's health. And yeah, he, that, that first round failed. Uh, we have to see what happens next. Uh, but there is a, investing political capital means it goes away. Or, or spending political capital means it goes away if you fail. Just in case we didn't explain it carefully enough, the bill was about uh, re removing the religious exemption. I'm surprised, however, I guess, that you're calling it round one. You want to fight this fight again? I mean, it seems like- Well, here's like the thing, here's the thing. Um, if you believe that uh, we may have, th that things are getting worse as we, as vaccination rates go down, uh, the likelihood of having an outbreak goes up where children can die or be permanently damaged. It look, Samoa is a perfect example as a microcosm. The folks who, who oppose vaccines <clears throat> took advantage of an unfortunate incident that really had nothing to do with vaccines themselves, but we don't have to go into that. They got what they wanted, and vaccination rates went from in the 90s down to the 70s, and they're in the middle of a massive public health crisis with children dying and quarantines, uh, and so, at some point, I believe that's likely to happen here. We may have to wait until that happens. Uh, God willing, it never happens. And we never have to revisit if that's what it's gonna take. Uh, but it's very likely it will, because the things that pro-vaccine folks have said would happen, have over the past four years, the things that anti, the folks who, who are for vaccine choice is a gentle way to put it, but a respectful way to put it. And I do respect those folks, a lot of mm -hmm. good people on that side of the aisle too. Um, what they said wouldn't happen, they told me four years ago, which is why I didn't get on board with this bill then, they said you won't have an increase in measles incidents and other diseases as well. It did happen. We have seen dramatic increases. Pockets, right? I mean, well, we went from 82 cases back in 2016, which is when this bill was first discussed, uh, to, and, and I, I didn't sign on to the bill then, because it was 82 cases of disease that should be eliminated, but okay, it's only right. 82 cases. 17, we had around 150. 18, we had around 350. Last year, we had almost 1,300. So you're seeing this That's happening. bigger than a pocket, 1,300. It, it is, yeah. And it's, so it's time, timely now to revisit it. If we can't get consensus, bring people together and get enough votes to pass a bill, then we wait and hope the tragedy doesn't happen. If tragedy does, then those legislature, legislators who stood against it will have something to answer for. I know you have a bill to, to prevent scamming of the elderly, especially elderly with disabilities. I know you have a position on fixing the lead pipes and you've come out against the energy master plan. So if we can squeeze all that into the next segment, I'd like to talk to you Happy about Happy to talk it. about all this. When things. we continue our conversation with Senator Declan O'Scanlan, When Jersey Matters comes right back.